one of the questions I get asked as a writer all the time is where do you come up with ideas? In the case of the Merton Clavette biography that I'm writing, it happened as a result of this article. So this is May 11th, 1922. Vandal shoots window of artist at Wilson's picture. And I read that headline and I just needed to know more. And that's where the biography began. So how does something go from that idea coming across this article into a book? Simply because I wanted to know what the painting was. You know, what painting inspired somebody to shoot at it? And so I tried looking for it. I dug around. The painting was called Salome. There's a description of it that says, it depicts the head of ex-president Wilson on a tray lifted by a muscular black hand and arm and surrounding the tray is pictured the waves of a turbulent sea representing the trouble condition of the world. And it also mentions it was exhibited the previous year. And so I went back to those exhibition records and I couldn't find it. Uh, ultimately, I dug around and I found that the living family members have a website dedicated to Merton Clavette. And so I reached out to them. And that's how the collaboration began then. From that initial point of contact in May of 2022, I did my usual thing of just digging into research, reaching out to archives around the world, connecting with libraries, looking into databases, um, finding everything that I possibly could find out about Merton Clavette. And the family, Jason and, and Chris, did a wonderful job of providing access to their archives of ledgers and letters and journals and diaries and photography and these amazing promotional posters from the time, um, not to mention the, the art. Um, and, and then I just wrote and wrote and did more research and reached out. And uh, we got to the point where we finally have a manuscript. The book is nonfiction, though early on I made the decision to write it as an autobiography. It just really felt like the best way to encapsulate his voice. And because I had access to diaries and journals and letters, and he wrote several books during his lifetime, which I read, um, this feels like the truest way to represent Clavette. So obviously I tried to chase down all the loose ends I possibly could, but there are some logical leaps that had to be made to tell a cohesive story. Um, at the end of the manuscript, so what you have primarily is autobiography written first person, and then at the end there is a fact from fiction section, because I wanted to make sure to document some of these things that seem unbelievable and yet are true. We have evidence for them. And so you'll see in that section where I literally spell out this is true, this is true, this is how we got to those two things and made those connections. Um, but I'll follow it up with a, a quick reading from the book so you can get a sense of what it sounds like. After you open the book and go past the title page and the copyright page and the note to the reader that mentions the fact from fiction essay, then there is an introduction that begins the book proper. And that's what I'm going to read here. They called me the Great Clavette. Well, truly, and in all transparency and honesty, I gave myself that name. They did call me that, but only after I put on posters and declared it to be true. The trick, which proved easy, was to make myself and my act worthy of the label. They also called me the Man in Black. Again, I gave myself that name, but it also caught on. But I was born Merton Clive Cook in 1848 in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Or was I born in Wisconsin in 1868? See, I made my living being larger than life, entertaining crowds and performing, telling stories, making them laugh and share tales of my world travels. Now, all these years later, after telling so many stories so many times, it's hard to remember which are true and which are not. A fabrication, or maybe exaggeration is a better word, told again and again lodges itself in your brain and becomes truth after a while. Add old age to the equation, and it's a very and it's all very tricky to navigate. Here's the thing. A crowd doesn't want to hear about a little boy named Merton Cook in Wisconsin. They want the man in black, mysterious, full of wonder. A newspaper doesn't write a story because a boy's father dies and his mother moves him to the Wyoming Territory. Or at least they don't until you make a name for yourself as the Great Clavette. 
Then the papers want to know, who is this person? Where did he come from? And can his story sell us papers? The problem is, then, your whole livelihood is wrapped up in these stories. The splash and spectacular are far more enticing than the mundane truth that you'd rather forget. So here it is, my life account, setting the record straight before I'm not able to do it anymore. What can you expect? Well, much of the stories you've heard are true. I did cross the Atlantic multiple times, though maybe not 32 times. I knew Buffalo Bill, Harry Houdini, Mark Twain, and P.T. Barnum. Did I almost broker a deal to move Shakespeare's house to Long Island? Maybe. Did I te teach Sir Arthur Conan Doyle the dark arts? Yes, and that hack has been ripping me off ever since. Did I perform for Queen Victoria, King Edward, Lord Kitchener? Did I study art and sculpture under Auguste Rodin? Could I speak nine languages? Yes, yes, and yes. Was I the greatest shadow graphist, silhouettist, mind reader, equilibrist, phrenologist, magician, illusionist, pantomimist, necromancer, slack and tightrope walker, hypnotist, juggler, prestidigitator, and painter of all time? I tend to think so, but read on and judge for yourself.